Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia and I'm the owner of Alicia Be Creative. In today's tutorial, we're going to be using some gorgeous vinyl and decals from the Coveted Florals bundle from the Flynn Sister Supply Shop. So you guys know I'm gonna show you all the goodies that came in this package as well as how I put this tumbler together. Everything will be listed and linked down in the description box as well as any discount codes that I have for you to save you a little bit of extra money. So let's go ahead and get right into today's tutorial. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to be able to show you guys is this absolutely beautiful vinyl from Flynn Sister Supply Shop. So this is the Coveted Florals Bundle. It comes with a pack of 10 vinyl sheets as well as a decal sheet, which I just showed you. They are printed on a white backing, so they're perfect for dark colored tumblers. And these are all of the absolutely gorgeous vinyls. They're all floral related. I just, they like scream Jessica Flynn. She did an amazing job with this vinyl pack. I cannot wait to get into using all of these, but I am going to show you how I put together, of course, the tumbler for today using the Empower vinyl and matching decal. So let's go ahead and jump right into getting this tumbler ready. So I'm starting with a 30 ounce hog tumbler and I've already, you know, sanded it, done my typical prep work and done a flat white spray paint. Actually, I believe that I used a gloss spray paint for this in white just because I have found, and I think I've mentioned it a couple times already, that I am finding that it's much better and much juicier the sort of alcohol inks over a gloss base versus a flat white, which typically I was always doing. So I've switched to gloss paint if I'm gonna be doing alcohol ink directly on top of the paint, just because I feel like the alcohol inks come out a little bit more vibrant than over a flat white spray paint. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just using the color Espresso from Ranger Alcohol Inks, and we're just doing a traditional wood grain here. So this is not typically my go-to brown for an alcohol ink, but I'm out of both the sepia and teakwood colors that I normally would interchangeably use. So we're going with sort of like a dark vibe because the Empower Vinyl from Jessica Flynn's Coveted Florals pack is a really sort of deep dark background. And so I'm starting with this dark brown espresso and then you're gonna see me go in with a bit of black alcohol ink as well to just continue to darken up this wood grain base. So wood grain is super easy to do if you've never done a wood grain tumbler. All you need is just like a dry chip brush. I grabbed mine from the dollar store. No need to go break the bank on spending a bunch of money at like, you know, Home Depot or, you know, another store for a really expensive brush. I use this brush literally for every wood grain. It doesn't get cleaned. It's always just my wood grain brush. And literally all you do is do some up and down motions to be able to give that sort of bristled brush stroke look that represents and looks just like a wood grain, um, you know, a wood grain wood piece, uh, go outside and look at like, you know, tree trunks, all that stuff. Essentially, it just sort of mimics that. So I'm now going in with my black hole from Jen's Crafted Gems. And what I'm doing is I'm just sort of going in different sections. I'm not going to cover this entire tumbler in black hole. And I am being mindful to not put a whole lot of the black on this because you guys know that black alcohol ink really can take over an entire tumbler. So I just want this to like enhance the depth of this wood grain I'm going with, but I don't want the black to take over the cup entirely. Another alternative that could have been done had I thought of this earlier is you could have mixed the espresso with a couple drops of the black coal, right? And creating your own alcohol ink to sort of get a dip, a deeper, richer brown if you wanted to. But I do like the way that I did this because I was able to get in those sort of hints of super dark wood without sort of overtaking the cup and not letting the espresso color shine through. So this is the final look. I, of course, I'm gonna let that sit overnight. I always let my inks dry overnight so they don't turn green, I don't seal them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the turner for a coat of epoxy before we're back at it with adding our florals or adding our vinyl to the cup. So first thing I'm doing here is just sanding the top rim. Again, this cup only has one coat of epoxy over the wood grain. It really didn't need anything more than that, especially because I'm just going to be layering vinyl on top. Now, if you're someone who, when you're applying vinyl, you typically, you know, pull things up a lot. Um, I am committed to sticking it and that's where it goes. <laughs> so I typically don't have to remove my vinyl just because I just go with the flow and kind of let it be as is. But if you're someone 
who maybe struggles with vinyl application and will need to consistently pull up on your vinyl, I would recommend at least two coats of epoxy just because with one coat, you do run the risk of the vinyl lifting um, or you cutting through that epoxy um, rather and creating sort of like air pockets and things, which wouldn't be good for your overall tumbler. So what I've just done there is I've taken just black Oracle 631 vinyl in matte and I've just cut about a, I want to say probably about a two inch piece of vinyl, I want to say, just with my, um, you know, paper cutter. Nothing too crazy. Could I have done this in Cricut Design Space? Sure, but no reason to when I can just kind of get the size I want with just my paper cutter. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of layer that in what is going to now be the back side of the cup. And so I'm just taking that vinyl and I'm just making sure that it's straight and I'm just going to continue to use my squeegee just to push down any air. And then we're just going to trim off the bottom edge as well as the top edge of this cup to, again, just create sort of like this black strip of vinyl that is going to be on the back half of this tumbler. So same thing with the, type, the top, I'm just going to pull up on that vinyl and then cut it off with my craft knife. Once I'm finished with that, we then can get into applying the other pieces of the vinyl that I'm going to be using. So again, we are using the Empower vinyl here from the Coveted Florals pack. And what I did in Cricut Design Space is I cut the vinyl into a few strips. So I did about a, I want to say it was about a one and a half inch strip wide. And I did it 11 inches long, but you'll see that because of the way that I chose to go about the design for this tumbler, something that I should have paid attention to is that although this strip of vinyl is longer than the cup from top to bottom, when you're creating a slant or diagonal, you're going to need additional inches in order to be able to get from, you know, top to bottom in that diagonal fashion. So I should have actually cut this to be the full width of the vinyl. So doing like a, you know, a 11 and a half or 11.75 at least would have given me the correct amount that I needed to get all the way. But you'll notice that as I get to the bottom part of this cup that it doesn't quite reach the bottom of the tumbler. But don't worry about that. What I'm literally going to do is cut straight down from that strip Cut the last little bit of that vinyl there and I'm literally just going to puzzle piece this onto the cup. And in the final look, you aren't even going to be able to see a line or anything that sort of showcases that those are two separate sections of vinyl. So once I am done with that, I've got that sort of first initial strip there. And again, that meets from the top of the black on the front half, back half, if you will, all the way to the other side at the bottom of that black two inch strip that we have there. Okay. So I'm just going to start to trim things up here kind of as I go. I now have one more strip that I'm going to use and I am going to end up using this and splitting it in half to be able to utilize this in the two other sections that are going to create sort of like this slanted vinyl look on the front half of the cup. So now going ahead and grabbing that second sort of one and a half inch strip of the coveted florals of vinyl, we're going to start at the top portion of this cup and we're going to just follow our diagonal line. So I'm not measuring here. I'm really just using my own guesstimate as to placement and making sure that the vinyl stays the same width apart at the top part from the bottom section of this vinyl. You certainly could use a marker, um, like a tape line as sort of your guide to make sure that it stays exactly the same width apart from the top two versus the bottom two. I'm just, I'm just going through it. I'm just guesstimating, sort of just going with the flow. This is kind of how I create because this is, again, as I've showed many times before, I feel like on my channel, I knew what I wanted to use. I knew the elements that I wanted to be part of this tumbler. However, I didn't necessarily have a exact design idea going into this cup. So this is just sort of how I work with cups a lot of times, especially when I'm using, you know, different products. So I might have sort of a palette idea, if that makes sense, but sort of what the cup looks like is just sort of evolving as I continue to work on it. So you'll see I do the exact same thing there that I did with my top, my first line. I just took that little extra piece of vinyl, that little inch that was at the bottom and just kind of puzzle piece it onto that bottom section of that final diagonal to literally sort of finish off this sort of swirled vinyl look. 
So now that I've gotten that done, I've trimmed everything up. The other thing that I did cut out of this vinyl is a cut a diamond shape. So this is a diamond uh, just using the shapes feature in Cricut Design Space, and I cut it to be five inches long. So the height is five inches. The width is probably about two in total. And then I just place that directly in the middle of that black strip on the backside. So I then put this back on the turner for a coat of epoxy because I didn't want to do any additional layering and have this sort of um, showcase through this vinyl that we're using now, this mauve color. I didn't want the vinyl under it to sort of show the creases on this vinyl. So I made sure to do a coat of epoxy in between and then we're back at this tumbler again. I cut the same size diamond out of this mauve colored vinyl, which I'll list down in the description box. I got it a long time ago with a bunch of other colors. And then I just cut a bunch of, um, you know, vinyl strips. So same thing that I would have done, of course, for, um, just vinyl striping anything. I always have sort of these extra pieces all over my craft space in my in my scraps bin, of course. I always have like extras. And so I just took this color because it was the perfect match to the florals on this vinyl. I was having a super hard time. I was getting a little discouraged and worried that I wasn't gonna be able to find a vinyl to match. And lo and behold, that scraps, that scraps bin came into handy or came in, uh, uh, came in and really helped out in this because I definitely did not think I had a color to match. All of the vinyl I kept pulling out just didn't match the florals, didn't match anything that was happening, the colors in the vinyl. And so I was getting discouraged and thinking that I was going to have to, you know, kind of forego my idea. Uh, but thankfully I was able to find this in my scrap bin and be able to put it to good use. So I'm just lining each of the striped or each of the diagonal sections of the coveted florals with this mauve color just on the top line only. We're gonna follow the bottom line of the vinyl with a section of just black washi tape in the same width here. I believe that this uh, these vinyl stripes are like 11 and a half by probably, I'm gonna say maybe 0 0.10 in, um, in like the width of them. Uh, typically the what I gravitate towards when I'm doing vinyl striping in general. So now that we have the mauve color on there, we're going to go ahead and get the black washi tape on here. So this is just my go-to. Again, my washi tape is literally what I utilize all of the time when it comes to, um, you know, my my vinyl striping usually. This color, of course, uh, the mauve color that I'm currently working on to outline the black section on the front half of the cup, of course, was not part of a washi tape that I had. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing with the mauve color on the front side, well, the back side. This is really the back of the cup. So originally this had been the front of the tumbler and then I kind of changed my mind because I really wanted to use the decal that goes with this vinyl, but I knew that it would look too busy if I place it directly on the diamond on this part of the cup. So I swapped and kind of switched ideas last minute and made what made what is the front now the front, which was originally going to be the back. Anyway, back to what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna continue to finish just lining this up. Normally this is something I'd speed up, but I feel like I keep speeding up these sections of my video. And I feel like you guys are missing this kind of content and it might be helpful for you. So let me know if this is something that you enjoy seeing or if you would prefer that I just continue to speed through these sections so that it doesn't take so long to get to the next clips. Um, I always feel like it's a little self-explanatory, but I always, always have to be mindful and think about not everybody has been making cups for as long as I have and that sometimes, you know, really showing the real life process of creating the cut from start to finish, including the decal process is probably going to be helpful. So let me know what you guys think of that in the comments for sure. Uh, but I'm just going to finish up this middle section here. Again, all I did was outline with that mauve color, the black section to really just kind of uh, make that black strip really pop. And then we're going to go back in with the black washi tape. And again, the black washi tape is just going to be the line to line the vinyl, um, the diagonal strips of the coveted florals vinyl on the bottom half of it. So it's got the mauve strip up top and then a black strip of vinyl on the bottom half of that vinyl. So again, this was a cup that just continued to kind of evolve as I was going through it. It wasn't something that I had like an original idea as to what it was going to look like. I just knew that these dark florals, this Empower vinyl and the decal matched really well with just like a 
dark vibe I felt like. It's still super gorgeous and I wouldn't say that this is like a like a dark florals as far as, as far as like you know it being like dark I don't know like dark gothic vibes. I don't get that from this cup. This is definitely just like a very like chic like clean look and believe it or not I don't have one speck of glitter on this entire cup which is pretty shocking for me because usually I have to put at least a little bit of shimmer but I decided that this cup just didn't need it it was beautiful in its own right and so I'm happy that I kept it the way it's way it was and didn't add like even a glitter fine mica um, because I feel like this just this just is so simple but so gorgeous and so unique that it just didn't need that sparkle so now now we're going to go ahead and apply our decal. So again, these are white backed decals, so you can apply them to very dark bases without having to worry about, you know, the decal sort of um, completely disappearing when you apply it to a dark base. So I'm just going to cut around the extra vinyl around this and then get this applied. So we're going to apply this to the mauve diamond on what is going to now be the front of the cup. And I'm just going to use the hinge method to get this applied. So placing it exactly how I want it on the cup, then cutting a small piece of that backing off of the back of the vinyl, and then adhering that little bit of the vinyl to the cup and then using my squeegee tool in order to get the rest of this applied to the cup. So I struggled a little bit here. I got a little bit of a wrinkle, but I was very easily able to pull up on this vinyl decal and fix that situation there and not have to worry about the vinyl ripping or, or anything damaging happening to that vinyl. So of course you guys know the final process in this after I'm done with all the vinyl work, which was the most of this cup, we're going to go ahead and apply our coats of epoxy. So I'm just mixing up equal parts of part A and part B of Flynn Sisters Premium Epoxy. This is the Artist Cure formula. And so I always use this for my final coats of epoxy because the shine is absolutely breathtaking. And if you haven't already taken that deep dive into getting this epoxy, I definitely encourage you to do so. I have a link and discount code down in the description box. So this is the final look at this cup after the two final coats of epoxy. I am in love with this and I can't wait to use the rest of the vinyl in this pack. So you'll have to stay tuned to see what I create with that. But I do hope that you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. And if you did, give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!